Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. And we're into a new section where God is not mentioned in this book, but it comes in that same time period. I thought it would be great to be able to go into history and keep into history because Ezra and Nehemiah, Ezra was the one who came back as the scribe to be able to bring back people to law in amongst Israel from exile. Um, and we get to see that the Persian king um, gave permission to come back to Jerusalem. And so Zerubbabel was that first one, 538, uh, Cyrus, king of Persia. Then it was Darius, then it was Xerxes. You see these kings throughout history, and they give us the timeline of some of the things within Scripture as well. And so we get to see that in 538, uh, 539 uh, B.C., here come the uh, Israelites back into Jerusalem. They build the temple, um, and then there's that 80-year gap. Um, and within that gap, as we get to see uh, from 538 to 4, excuse me, um, 486, 465, um, Xerxes is reigning. And so within that time frame, there is something that happens within the Jews, and that is recorded in the book of Esther. So we get to have the temple built, we have the people revived in their faith, um, but then Esther is sitting there in that in-between time from the temple built towards the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. And here we have Esther. And so we're going to read that narrative of Esther. And as I mentioned before, this is a peculiar book of being able to say it doesn't mention God once, but it is all about God's provision and God's timing and God's purpose in and amongst placing people at the per perfect time and perfect place. And so um, we read together Esther chapter 1. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes. Xerxes reigned from 486 to 465 BC. And so this is that king of Persia. The Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces, stretching from India to Cush. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa. And in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials, the military leaders of Persia and Media. The princes and the nobles of the provinces were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. They would put forth these kind of shows, this military prep. Um, and if you uh, want to see this, how Hollywood does this, it's actually looking back. Um, the movie 300 um, really shows this. They take time to bring forth of their might and their authority and, and the kind of showcase off their kingdom, the wealth of their kingdom, the, the armies of their kingdom. Um, and so uh, you see this a lot, especially within the Greek culture. Um, and that's just coming um, against the Persians pretty soon. But anyways, for a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor of the glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet, lasting seven days, in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. The garden had hangings of white and blue linen, fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, uh, <clears throat> marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberal, uh, uh, liberality. liberality excuse me. By the king's command, <clears throat> each guest was allowed to drink in his own way, for the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. Queen Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he commanded the seven eunuchs who served him, Mahuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, Abakthah, Zethar, and Carcass, to bring before him Queen Vashti, wearing her royal crown, in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. But when the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger. Since it was customary for the king to consult experts in matters of law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. 
He spoke to the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king. Karshena, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Meres, Marsena, and Mamukin, the seven nobles of Persia and Media who were special access, who had special access to the king and, and were highest in the kingdom. According to law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? He asked. She has not obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the eunuchs have taken to her. Then Mamukin replied in the presence of the king and the nobles, Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles and the peoples of all the provinces of King Xerxes. For the queen's conduct will become known to all the women, and so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she would not come. This very day the Persian and Median women, uh, women of the nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then, when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all his vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands, from the least to the greatest. The king and his nobles were pleased with this advice, so the king did as Mamukin proposed. He sent dispatches to all parts of the kingdom, to each province in its own script, and to each people in its own language, proclaiming in each people's tongue that every man should be ruler over his own household. In Esther chapter 1, it sets up the drama. It sets up the narrative of being able to see what God has in plan for his people. Because they are over in Persia, over in the capital of Susa. And so this isn't taking place in the land over in Jerusalem of what's happening over Jerusalem. Now we're over to the east of what's happening in Persia. And God is still at work in Persia. He's at work and amongst even the selfish acts of a king that just wants his queen in his presence. And mainly because he wanted to, as it says, show her off. And within that, when she didn't have that happen, then he takes the steps of being able to get what he wants. But yet, even when he gets what he wants in a selfish way, God is working his plan. And I think that gives us not, I hope not comfort, to do whatever we want in a selfish way because God's still going to work his plan. But God's plan is not thwarted by man's selfishness. Rather, in the book of Esther, it was exactly enacted for a time that God would raise up an individual to be able to be for his people, to be able to bring forth his covenant, his promises, that are ever new, even in a foreign country. And so, the plot thickens. The narrative gets pretty deep. Maybe you've read the book of Esther. But as we read through this narrative, you're just going to see, not God mentioned, but God always involved. And that, I pray, gives us a sense of uh, calm. Because a lot of times, maybe we don't look to God. Maybe we don't see God. But guess what? God is always at work. And so you might be questioning him this day of that he's not present. That God is always present and God is always working. You can trust that through his promises. And you can trust that. That whenever we come to him in prayer, as we come to him as a community, he is there. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the very end. It's a great promise. It's a great reality in our life. That God is present and he is working. Have a blessed day as God continues to work in your life.